Hey guys, hope you're ready to learn about how decisions are made in a perfectly competitive market. And you've made yourself familiar with the topic on perfect competition. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about a specific market, which is perfect competition, which is unlike other markets in which you produce goods. And we said one of the main features of a perfectly competitive market is that any producer or any consumer uh, can buy or sell the good without having any impact on the market price. So if you're selling a particular commodity in a perfectly competitive market, you cannot have any impact on the market price. All you do is take the price that's given to you based on the costs that you've learned from the previous chapter, then you decide how much to produce. All right, so hopefully you're familiar with those things. And we, we came up with the uh, scenario where you determine how much to produce as well, which I'll review briefly before proceeding with today's video. And we talked about the previous two propositions in the previous video, which is where price equals marginal cost when the producer is producing at an optimal quantity. And also they cannot produce where MC is decreasing. All right, so make sure you're familiar with those. In this video, we are going to address the third proposition, which says that whether you produce in the short run or not, or whether you exit in the long run or not, is going to be dependent on where your price is in relation to either your average variable cost or average total cost. All right, so just take the statement as given right now, and then we're going to uh, convince you that that is true uh, in this video. So just a little brief review before we uh, continue. Make sure you understand why MC is upward sloping. It's because of diminishing marginal product of labor. Make sure you understand that ATC is always U-shaped because of the shapes AFC and AVC takes. Again, this goes back to the cost chapter. MC will always cut across ATC at its minimum. You very, make sure you're very clear on why that's true as well. And then in perfect competition, price equals AR equals MR. Right? So this, this conclusion that we reached in the previous video there, that the, the quantity we produce at is going to be true where MR equals MC, is going to be true for every market. But the fact that price equals MR is only true for, uh, going to be true for perfectly competitive market. So if we draw a graph with quantity on the x-axis and you can have costs, and prices on the vertical axis, everything in, measured in dollars on the vertical axis. If you have your ATC line, right, then you have your MC line. Make sure you remember that MC has to cut across ATC at its minimum. So, you know, mine's not a perfect graph, but make sure you remember that. So now, if I take a price in a perfectly competitive market to be given to this producer, right, so we know that for perfect competition, price equals MR. That's not going to be true for every market. Now, given this information, this tells you how much to produce. So you say, first thing you're looking for on an, any graph is where does MR equal MC? Or in this case, price equal MC, right? Because the price and MR are equal. So that tells you that this is how much I'm going to produce. So that's the first thing you're trying to figure out on any graph in terms of producer production level is how much to produce. And that tells you, uh, that information is told to you by where price equals MC equals MR for perfect competition, right? So this is true for everyone. The fact that price also equals MR, which also equals MC, is only true for perfect competition. So make sure you're very clear and, and comfortable uh, in terms of working with that graph. All right, so now let's get back to short run and long run decision uh, for the producer. The difference between short and long run, you should know from before, is that in the short run, you're constrained by certain inputs. Right? The lease on the land, if you paid a, if you've signed a contract which says you have to rent a, you know, land for a year, and in two months down the road you're like, I don't want to produce anything, your lease is fixed. So that's a fixed cost. You cannot alter that in the short run, but in the long run you can. Right? And the difference between short and long run is however long it takes for a particular producer to adjust all their costs, sorry, all their inputs. All right, so you know, for, for example, factory cannot be sold and gotten rid of very easily. Uh, so in the short run, there's at least one input that's fixed. That's, that's the difference. Again, if you're not clear between the difference uh, between short and long run, go review the uh, video on that topic. And in the long run, and you know, I'll talk about shutting down and exiting in more detail, the long run, the decision is where all your inputs can be gotten rid of, right? So you, all your inputs are variable. You can get rid of your lease, you can get rid of your uh, machines in, the, in terms of the baker, you can get rid of your labor that you've hired. All inputs are variable, whereas in the short run, there are some inputs that are constraining you because they cannot be changed. All right, so hopefully you are clear on that difference. Now let's look at the short run. All right, so I'm going to do a numerical example uh, and make sure you understand this and follow the step by step. So let me make some numbers up. Let's say my fixed cost for this producer is $10. $10. So that's regardless of what you uh, produce, that's going to be your fixed cost. Let's think of that as your lease on your land. Think of it as weekly lease or whatever. Variable cost is 20 So that's the cost of your labor, the cost of buying those raw materials. And your total cost, therefore, is going to be 30. 
So if I say that your total revenue, right, so make sure you remember total revenue is price times quantity. If my total revenue is 25, so now pause the video and answer this question, should you produce or not? All right, so the, now the question is, are you in the short run or long run? That's gonna tell you whether you should produce or not. So if you, are, if you are somebody who's operating in the short run, that means you cannot avoid these costs. Those are going to happen regardless of whether you produce or not. So if you say in the short run, I'm not going to produce, and I'm gonna just let the uh, lease of the building be paid, then your loss is going to be, you're not gonna earn any revenue, Right, your total, total revenue is gonna be zero, and you're going to be incurring a loss of 10. So in the short run, if you don't produce, you'll incur a loss of, loss of 10. But if you do produce, you're going to earn a revenue of 25, you're gonna incur a loss, uh, sorry, total cost of 30, and then your profits are going to be negative five. So in the short run, if you shut down and don't produce at all, you'll incur a loss of negative 10. However, if you do produce, you will earn a loss, but it's gonna be less than negative 10. You would rather earn a loss of five than earn a loss of 10. So the point here is that you care about variable cost in the short run because you cannot do anything about fixed costs. But in the long run, now you want to be able to recover everything. So in the long run, you will not produce unless your total revenue is more than 30. So keep this example in mind as we go through the graphs and the other parts of this chapter as well. So short run decision is that you would shut down if total revenue is less than variable cost because we do not take uh, fixed cost into consideration. And then you can alter that equation into saying marginal revenue is less than AVC or price is less than average variable cost. And the way we get there is we know total revenue is price times quantity. That's the left hand side of this equation. And the right hand side is variable cost. Now we know that AVC is variable cost divided by quantity. So variable cost is going to be just AVC times quantity. So you can cancel out quantities from both sides and then what you're left with is price is less than AVC. So that's how you're able to drive the third one from the first two. And we also know in perfect competition, price equals MR. So all three on the left hand side are equal. So in the short run, and when we do it on the graph, make sure you are able to follow, you will shut down if the price is less than AVC and you will continue producing as long as price is more than AVC. All right. So here's your graph, you have your MC, you have your ATC, I've left out the AFC because it's not very relevant here. And then you have your AVC, and if you're wondering why MC is not U-shaped, uh, you know, you're right, I could have, you know, I can draw the MC to be U-shaped as well. So hopefully that will make you feel better. All right, now, if your price is, so that's your firm's short run supply curve, as long as the price goes below AVC, which is this line, you're not going to produce anything. Sorry, all right. And then as soon as price goes above AVC, you're going to start producing. Don't worry about profits or loss yet, even though I mentioned it here, we'll talk about that in the next video. But the key point here is that as, long, as soon as price goes below here, you produce nothing. And as soon as price goes above that, you will produce based on where you are on the marginal cost curve. For example, if price is here, you will produce, you know price equals MR, you'll produce here. If the price is here, you'll produce here. But as soon as price goes below here, you'll produce zero. So your short run supply curve of is this part and this part of your MC curve. All right, so make sure you're clear on that information. And that's what the conclusion is. The short run supply curve for a perfectly competitive firm is the point of MC, which is above AVC. All right, so hopefully you're clear on that. So if you think of an example, if you go to a restaurant and you're like, you know, there are nobody, nobody in the restaurant, the tables are not filled. Why is it that the restaurant owner is still keeping the restaurant open? And the answer is in the short run, the restaurant owner has certain fixed costs. They've already paid the lease. They've already you know, paid for certain equipment. They cannot get rid of that overnight. So as long as they can recover their variable cost, which is the cost of ingredients of cooking food and maybe the cook and the servers, as long as they can recover those costs, they will continue to stay open because it's better to earn a smaller loss by producing and recovering your variable cost than to completely shut down. Right, so make sure you are able to relate these concepts to the real world because one day you want to be a successful businessman and you need to know these things. Now the long run, and then we'll conclude this video, in the long run we should be able to recover all our costs. So now we don't only care about variable cost, we want to recover your total cost. So you will exit the market if total cost is more than total revenue or if average total cost, we can derive this the same way we derived the previous one and I can do it in just a second. We know total revenue is P times Q. We know total cost is ATC times Q. 
So you can cancel the queues out and you're left with this part. So in the long run, you will produce if and only if your price is more than ATC and you will exit if price is less than ATC. All right. So hopefully this stuff is making sense. And then similarly, you will enter the market if total revenue is more than total cost and you get to the same outcome where price is more than ATC if you, if you want to enter the market in the long run and you will exit if price is less than ATC. So make sure you're very clear, A, the difference between short and long run, and B, how your decisions change. And the numerical example I did in the start of the video is very important. That should be able to clarify a lot of these doubts you might have. So if you look at the graph, it's the same as the short run, but now our decision whether to enter or not is not based on the minimum of AVC, but it's based on the minimum of ATC. So we'll enter the market as long as price is above ATC, and we'll exit the market as soon as price becomes below ATC. So the long run supply curve is this shape, whereas the short run supply curve was that part of MC which was above AVC. So in the short run, we also include this part of the curve. Now we don't in the long run. So you make sure you're very clear on the difference A between short and long run and how your supply curves for a particular producer changes when we go from short to long run. So here's just summarizing it, uh, what we talked about in this video. I'm not going to repeat myself again. Uh, and then, so that's going to conclude today's video. So make sure you're very clear on how a producer changes their decision in the short versus long run in terms of how much they're going to produce, that's MRMC, and whether they're going to produce or shut down. Now in some books, and I should mention this, uh, they, they interchange shutting down and exiting, right? So they use shutting down for both short and long run, but I've differentiated the two because it's important to know that shutting down is more of a short run concept and exiting is a long run concept. But when you're reading books and if they only refer to shutting down for both short and long run, that's okay, right? Make sure you understand just the difference, uh, not the terminology they use. All right, so hopefully you're clear with all of these terminologies and graphs on the, in this video. And in the next video, we'll talk about how you measure profits for a producer on this, on this graph.